Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the Town Board Work Session for Tuesday, May 19th. Thank you for joining us via Zoom or YouTube for our virtual meeting. Um, I just wanted to make a couple of quick announcements. Um, I will keep this a little bit brief as compared to some of my previous um, opening statements <laughs> at these meetings. Um, I will have a more uh, complete supervisor's report that'll go out in the e-newsletter tomorrow, but there were just a couple of things that I wanted to uh, touch on really quickly. Um, the first is that the town is going to be launching a program um, to give out free masks, free uh, cloth masks that were donated to Westchester County by Hanes, the underwear manufacturer, and have subsequently been given to the town of Newcastle to give to our residents. Um, and so we are going to be giving away masks uh, for seniors and for anyone who is themselves an essential worker. Um, we have those masks available at Town Hall. If you come into Town Hall into the uh, entrance by the police station. Um, there is the opportunity to pick up masks if you are a senior citizen, a vulnerable resident, or an essential worker. Um, we will also be at Gedney Park this weekend. Um, for visitors to Gedney Park, those who have forgotten their masks, um, we want to make sure and we want to encourage compliance with the governor's executive orders requiring all New Yorkers to wear masks when they are not able to socially distance. Um, and therefore, our town rec department uh, will be in Gedney Park this weekend on Saturday uh, from 8 to 2 or Sunday from 10 to 2 um, to give masks to park goers who have forgotten their masks. So uh, this is an opportunity to, uh, to get a Hanes underwear produced uh, cotton mask. This is not a, uh, not, not a um, medical grade uh, N95 mask. This is, this is one that is really for, for social distancing purposes. Um, so wanted to make that announcement. One other announcement that I wanted to make is with regard to above ground pools. We have had a lot of questions come in to the buildings department and to members of the town board um, about the possibility of installing an above ground pool. It is important that everyone know that above ground pools are actually very highly regulated by the state, the county, um, as well as by the town. Um, and this is really for health and safety reasons. Um, we've got a lot of kids, um, they're home, they're curious, they're um, wandering around the, the backyard. We wanna make sure that um, anything that gets installed uh, is something that's safe uh, for them. So if you're thinking about trying to install an above ground pool, um, understand that you need to have a permit. So a pool that's deeper than two feet uh, requires a building permit and anything between two feet and four feet in height uh, requires a um, code compliant barrier offense uh, for safety purposes. So um, don't just go to BJ's and buy one of these things. Uh, please contact our buildings department first. Um, it, the number is 914-238-4723. Um, and the last thing that I just wanted to touch on, uh, Governor Cuomo today uh, in his, his um, address talked about how Memorial Day is an important American tradition. It's also an important Newcastle tradition. Um, and due to the current health crisis, we announced at our last meeting uh, that the town would not be able to hold our traditional Memorial Day parade. However, we have been working with our Memorial Day committee, as well as our uh, colleagues and friends at the Newcastle Community Media Center who've been propping us up in so many ways throughout this crisis. Um, and we're working right now to plan a virtual Memorial Day celebration that will both honor the soldiers from Newcastle who lost their lives in service to our country, um, and will also be a way to celebrate our community and its enduring spirit. So further details on this event will be announced in Friday's community e-newsletter. And so that is actually all the updates that I have for today. So with that, the uh, first thing that we have on our agenda this evening is our MS4 presentation. Um, and do we have Sabrina and, uh, Charney Hall, our director of planning, and Bob Scioli, our town engineer with us to give this presentation? Thank you. Over to you guys. Well, thank you all. Good evening. Um, okay. Um, 
Thank you. I, uh, Bob and I are here tonight to present to you our annual MS4. We are a municipal separate storm sewer system. Under New York State DEC, we are required to track our accomplishments um, in relation to New York State stormwater permit. So I'm going to share my screen. We have, Bob and I have prepared a PowerPoint presentation for you and for everybody who is watching. Um, and this is uh, an obligation. Every year we come to you and we kind of present our accomplishments for the year. This information is sub submitted to New York State DEC as part of our requirements under our MS4 permit. So we're going to present to you. We're going to try and make it as exciting and riveting as possible. Um, and if you have questions, uh, we'll be happy to answer them for you. So to start, um, the time period of this report runs from from um, March 10th, 2019 through March 9th of 2020. So every municipality or every MS4, they hear, there can be non-municipal entities who are MS4s, um, are preparing, you know, have to prepare the same report and adhere to the same regulations. Let me start by saying what is stormwater and just re in real quickly stormwater is just what it sound like, sounds like it's water from storms when it rains um, when the snow melts if it hails and that water falls on the ground that is called stormwater as stormwater flows across the ground it picks up pollutants that end up in our lakes rivers and our streams and that's really what we are trying to control we try and control the quality of that stormwater so we don't increase flooding opportunities and we also try and um control the quality of that water. And that's where we try and, and prevent that pollution from getting into our water bodies. Just to give you a sense, this is Newcastle's hydrology. And when we talk about hydrology, we, it, we're talking about our streams, um, our ponds. We also have what's called drainage divides, you know, the Hudson River, the Croton Reservoirs. Um, our land surface is divided by where a drop of water falls and how it flows across the land. We are located within four watershed basins, the Croton River Basin, which is also known as the New York City Watershed. We are located in the lower Hudson River Basin. Um, we have smaller divides that are very um, famous, the Bacantico and the Sonmo River Basin. We also have the Bronx River Basin, which drains to the Cantico Reservoir, which is also part of New York City's drinking water supply. And we have the upper Long Island Sound uh, Basin, which is part of the larger Long Island Sound watershed. When we talk about water quality, right now, New York State DEC um, you know, tracks water quality of all of the water bodies in the state. Different areas of our community that are located in different watershed basins have different water quality problems. For example, the Croton watershed is, is known as phosphorus restricted. And you see the TMDL uh, insignia there. New York State has developed a total, total maximum daily load of phosphorus that is within our watershed and that we have to try and reduce that amount of phosphorus within the Croton watershed area of our community. The Upper Long Island Sound watershed is nitrogen restricted. There's no TMDL for nitrogen, but we know that nitrogen levels in the Long Island Sound are high. So we do everything we can within that portion of our community to reduce nitrogen levels. We have water bodies in our community that are on uh, a list called the Priority Water Body List. It's maintained by DEC and populated by DEC. Certain water bodies have high levels of pathogens metals or nutrients which put them on this list and we work to take them off the list. We also have water bodies listed on what's called the New York State DEC Department of Environmental Conservation 303D list um, and those water bodies include the Sawmill River and the Bronx River and again these, these water body lists are maintained by uh, the state agencies, they do the testing and they make the determination. 
anybody, a local municipality, a resident, a not-for-profit organization, a local community group can make a recommendation to DEC to list a water body on any one of these lists, but DEC is the final entity who will list them on their lists. Phase two stormwater requirements. Um, in Newcastle, there are several different departments that implement what's called the MS4 program, the Municipal Separate Storm Sewer Program. Um, the development department implements them, the engineering division, the planning division, the town clerk's office implements a component of this program, the parks department, the Department of Public Works, um, I said engineering, um, but we we all work together to make sure we meet our minimum control measures. There's six of them listed here. This presentation will include going through each of these minimum measures and reporting to you how we have met that minimum measure during the 2019-2020 reporting period. When it comes to minimum measure one, this is called public education and outreach. And we have identified a list of target audiences that you can see on the left-hand side of the slide. And we look at the topics that we have educated them on on the right-hand side of the slide. For example, each year we send out a water quality mailing. Within that water quality mailing, there are several topics that relate to our MS4 permit requirements. We also do education when we are out, when the engineering department is out inspecting construction sites, they're speaking with operators of that construction site. So, you know, we target good water quality, good stormwater practices when we are in our day-to-day -day business. So when it comes to public education and outreach, these are our audiences, and this is the topic, the list of topics that we look to educate people on. We also implement strategies. I had mentioned earlier the, the, the newsletter. We do one direct mailing um, was performed during the year, during the, um, the reporting period. We have a mailing list of 5,923 residents that receive our documentation. We have public events and presentations. And we, you know, during the reporting period, there were 2,000 of them. This includes um, discussions like this one. It includes discussions, public hearings that occur at all of our board meetings because 90% of our board meetings, uh, applications before the zoning board, applications before the planning board, the environmental review board, they all include some element of stormwater quality. So this is a list that, um, you know, our, our cable access runs our programming um, ongoing. We provide printed materials. We do our daily inspections. And we have materials that are available in town hall, posted at the Tropical Library, um, in around our town park kiosks and um, at the Department of Public Works as well as our website. We are required to evaluate each of the minimum measures. The way we are doing this in regards to public education and outreach is really looking at when we review applications before our permitting boards, we see an increase in the amount of low impact and better site design elements, which are really geared towards reducing stormwater, improving uh, the quantity and quality of that stormwater runoff from development action. We know that our information pamphlets and brochures are being picked up at our various sites, and we know that our website is being visited. Minimum control measure two. This is um, a public participation and involvement action uh, under the MS4 permit. This is where our cleanup events that are held every year, we, all, we did alternative cleanups just recently. Um, and so last year we had one uh, in the spring, which goes towards this year's reporting. We have a community hotline that people can call to report any concerns or problems. Our community meetings are open to the public. We have public hearings where the public actually comes and, and voices their opinions. And we, po we post this annual report on our website and this presentation is viewed on our cable access channel. 
evaluating our public participation and involvement. As I mentioned earlier, um, stormwater is discussed at many of our board meetings, at our public meeting, at our public meetings. The public raises issues and concerns regarding stormwater. We provide stormwater information in our townwide mailing, and we have a website questionnaire that we post. Last year, we included a stormwater question in our newsletter and we ran a contest. We had 14 folks respond to that contest. So that was quite exciting. We're hoping that we get more this year in the water quality mailing where folks will mail back their card and, and enter to win a fun surprise. Minimum measure three, illicit discharge detection and elimination. This minimum measure um, involves um, all of the departments that I spoke of earlier, and we have to implement strategies to really look at our stormwater systems that are out throughout the town. We have, um, this past year, we used a geographic information systems collector application where we verified uh, outfall data that was presented to us back in the early 2000s. We went out, we had interns who worked with um, the assistant planner who went out and walked the entire town determining every point, I think there were over 500 of them in that original mapping and really honing in, are they really outfalls? We can say with 100% certainty, there are 313 outfalls within our community today. All of those outfalls were what's called dry weather screen this past year, which when the interns were out and verifying the locations of these outfalls, they also looked at the condition of the outfalls and determined that that they were functioning or not. We also looked at building maintenance, commercial car washes, parking lots. Uh, we look for cross connections where you have stormwater going into septic systems or, or washing machines and dryers going into the sewer, into the, our storm drain system. And we kind of look for these illicit connections throughout the town. I can tell you that this year we did not detect any illicit discharges throughout the community. When we talk about strategies to um, to look at how we've implemented this minimum control measure, we can say that our storm sewer shed mapping has been completed. Our information is available in geographic information systems or, or georeference mapping. Um, some of the information is not available for the public to, uh, you know, to view, but much of it is through our website. And we can tell you that 100% of staff in the relevant positions in each of the different departments have received IDDE or illicit discharge detection elimination training. We're evaluating this minimum measure continually, and we feel that the number of illicit discharge uh, detection and elimination has been reduced because we have educated staff, we have taken on more inspections, and we are improving our tracking and reporting. As I mentioned earlier, we did not have any illicit discharges this year. I'm going to turn this over to uh, Bob Scioli, the town engineer, who's going to talk about minimum measure uh, four and minimum measure five. So, Bob, with that, I'm going to turn it over to you. Thank you, Ms. Sabrina. Good evening, everyone. Uh, basically, minimum control measure number four, in essence, is a, a mandated item we had to do for DEC which is the task the town has is to make certain that during construction activities, the erosion and sedimentation from the sites due to the disturbance of the construction activities are held to a minimum, whereas not to create any type of turbidity into the streams and any type of sediment getting into the stormwater systems of the town. On the slide in front of everyone, there's three main items that we do to attempt to curtail that from happening. Uh, one of the first and foremost, uh, that the owners are required to submit stormwater pollution plans, which includes a report and the plans, uh, which are all in accordance with the New York State DEC Stormwater Management Design Manual and the New York State Standard Specifications for Erosion Control, which is known as a blue book, but it's really not blue. I'm not quite sure where they came up with that name, but that's what it's called. <laughs> uh, those are... <laughs> Those are the two books we go by. 
uh, and the consultants engineers go by, which is a guide, which if everything is designed in accordance with those manuals, it's acceptable to reduce the types of phosphorus and nitrogen that we don't want to get into the systems as Sabrina was explaining so articulately before. That's bullet one. Bullet two is the engineering division performs inspections, routine inspections during that time to ensure compliance with the SWIP, which is the stormwater pollution prevention plan. And there's always problem with stormwater. Sometimes it's one word, sometimes it's two word, don't ask me why. But anyway, the middle bullet <laughs> is the inspections we do to uh, ensure compliance with the regulations set up by DEC. Um, thirdly, it's like a double redundant system. The owners are required to retain services of their own consultant, which they have to pay through on their own to perform weekly site inspections as well. And they send those to us. We do review them and we keep track of them and we keep track of all the items that we need to do. So when we do get ordered from the state, we have all this information on hand. Um, next slide, please, Sarah. Thank you. So basically the strategies and implemented are basically what I just discussed on the previous page where the SWIP inspection review procedures are in place. And these are really mandated many, many years ago when the laws came into B and the town board adopted the chapter 108A, which is really mimics what New York State's DEC likes to see done in all the counties and municipalities throughout New York State. That was adopted April, 2007. Um, during this review period, there were 10 SWIPs. For example, we had retail development out there at Chappaqua Crossing. We had uh, one going on right now down by uh, Sunshine Children's Home. Um, another one example is the Belay subdivision, which is going in right now uh, by 60 Kerry Lane. Um, and also, too, the procedures to receive public comments is in place. Any type of complaints or issues that we do get, it is coming to the development department and then it's circulated to each person that is best fit to answer the question as they come in. Next slide, please, Sabrina. Um, what I attempted to show here is basically the end product is what we try to get out of all these plans that the consultants come up with that the planning board and the zoning board and everyone looks at in our department. And basically, this is a typical example, and this represents a completed basin, uh, which is located, I don't know if anyone's been there, it's the Mavis Tire Center out there at 358 <clears throat> Sawmill River Road in Millwood. And basically, this was predominantly a wetlands mitigation approach because the basin was put in the buffer uh, since pretty much the whole site was included in a buffer. And basically, it picks up all the new and previous runoff from the new parking lot areas that they had put in there because they did have numerous issues with parking lot issues. And they came before the planning board and they basically presented new plans in compliance with DEC. And in this particular case, <clears throat> it was within so many feet of a water course in which not only do they have to go through the rigors of the MS4 for our town, but it had to get approval from the New York State DEP as well. So that basically just goes to show some highlights of some of these items. You notice the deer fence around the uh, basin to try to keep out the deer. So the vegetation that's trying to grow in there, it does grow. Um, one of the things that we do for minimum control measure number five uh, is really once the site is built out, we try to have measures and maintenance agreements and performance bonds, which ensure that the owner will maintain these over the years. So basically they do submit stormwater maintenance agreements and performance bonds to the town. Um, as you notice, they do come before the town board for their approval, basically in performance bonds and stormwater agreements. And basically that's it. What happened? Oh, we, uh, next one, please, Sabrina. Sorry. Thank you. That's the one we were just on, right? I know. It's, it's it's, it's a little bit of a delay, sorry about it. Oh, okay, oh, that's fine. Uh, this slide here shows another finished product, which I think everyone should see because there's a lot of time and effort that the consultants spend, the planning board spends, we spend reviewing these things to make certain that they come out as planned and as desired in the wishes of DEC who set all the standards in the first place. 
This is up by Brandywine, and this is off of Brandon Drive. The photograph to your left is the stormwater basin, which is north of Cynthia Court, which is still maintained privately. It hasn't been dedicated to the town yet, to the town board. Of course, the town board has to accept it. Uh, the photograph on your right is the southerly stormwater basin, which picks up the four lots which are now being presently built by John Nickich, lots five, six, seven, and eight. Uh, in this subdivision as well, not only did it have to go through the rigors of the MS4 with Chapter 108A, it had to get reviewed and approved by New York City DEP as well. Next slide, Ms. Sabrina. Thank you. So basically, this is an outline of all the strategies that have been implemented. I'll go through these, each one of these bullets. Basically, there's five construction projects disturbing one more acre right now. I briefly mentioned these before. Basically, one's at 15 Spring Valley Road. That is the Sunshine Children's Home, 16 Kerry Lane is Belay, 773. They had a demolition permit of the existing building. It used to be the formerly Legions of Christ off of Route 128. Of course, the Brandywine subdivision for lots five, six, seven, and eight. And of course, Chapel Crossing for the retail site development. Uh, again, all active construction sites are inspected by the engineering division and owner's consultant. Uh, all inspections are performed in compliance by DEC standards, where they set really the guidance and the rule book for us to all follow and oblige by. Uh, again, the public do have access to all the SWIPs uh, by SWIP by DEC. All the SWIPs, which is a voluminous sometimes storm on a report and plans, have to be kept in a lockbox at each site so anyone, i.e. public, can go up there and take a look at and of course, we have copies down in the development department for anyone to look at at their leisure if they have nothing to do and they want something to read. Um, also, too, again, <laughs> the owners are required to submit legal documents to make certain that if they are built correctly in the first place and maintained in perpetuity by the owners after they're built and the bonds are released. And then all agreements are approved by the board as well, and they are recorded. <laughs> in the Westchester County Clerk's Office. So when people do purchase these properties, they are picked up in the title report as well. Next slide, Ms. Sabrina. Um, basically, these are the evaluating measuring progress. Um, over the years, basically through the education and outreach program of this uh, minimum measure, I guess, believe one and two, it's helped a lot of the most importantly, contractors be more aware of the type of erosion controls and sediment controls that are that have to be installed during the construction process. And as well as that, the engineers and consultants go to training classes and there's a lot more seminars I myself go to to learn about the ever-changing stormwater regulations in the state by DEC and, of course, by DEP. Um, the stormwater management practices and associated BMPs continue to be one of the main focusing points, as Sabrina said previously, when they come before the planning board, the zoning board, and even with the uh, building permits in the development department as well. Uh, these are strategies implemented. There were four construction, four post-construction stormwater management practices were inspected, one of them being um, I believe there was a site out at the Westwood, off of Westwood and Harriman, which was a residential construction project. Uh, second bullet, uh, 120 catch basins have been inspected and maintained by TPW. They go through those obviously and clean out all the sediment so they don't get backed up. Uh, each catch basin, the newer ones anyway, have a, what's known as a sump in them. Uh, and that's in theory to collect any type of sediment that's inside the pipes and collects below the pipe. So in the next storm event, it doesn't get washed out and go further downstream to the outlets. Uh, we do track all the Excel Terry does at Terry Road, the civil engineering technician in our department. He does uh, spreadsheets, track these on spreadsheets and we do are developing a system to keep uh, readily good track of these items when we do it. So when it comes down to be audited by the state, we have everything readily available for their to look at, basically. Again, the local zoning and planning board reviews uh, do discuss these at length at those levels, uh, in addition to the, uh, for building permits, 
And bottom line to this whole thing is it's try to limit low impact developments, better site design elements, and also reduce flooding for the bigger storm events, and then improve water quality for the lower storm events. And that would um, end my presentation for minimum control four and five. And I'm gonna turn it back over to Sabrina to finish out the rest of the report. And thank you. Thank you, Bob. Thank you, Bob. Um, we're, I'm going to continue a little bit with minimum control measure number five. There are post-construction runoff control because Bob had very eloquently spoke about construction and um, management of construction sites and stormwater pollution prevention plans. But our community, Newcastle, is also a member of a regional entity called the Croton Kensal Watershed Intermunicipal Committee. We have formed the East of Hudson Watershed Corporation, um, and we developed a five-year regional stormwater retrofit program, which was approved by the New York State DEC. And the, the regional retrofit program is a requirement under minimum control measure five when it comes to post-construction runoff control, specifically targeted to reduce phosphorus. We are in our second five-year period with the East of Hudson Watershed Corporation. We are um, under compliance known as umbrella compliance, whereby all of the communities who are within the corporation share the amount of phosphorus reduction that every community achieves. We are in what's known as a year seven of this program. Um, the stormwater retrofit program in year seven contained 20 projects, 11 of them have been designed, three of them so far have been installed, and, and one is actually in construction right near right in construction right now. So this was um, during the reporting period of March 10th, 2019 to March 9th, 2020. The year program for the East of Hudson Watershed Corporation runs January to January. So we still have time, the construction season, to accomplish the year seven projects. In year eight, we have identified 16 projects, nine of which are currently in design. So the, the year one through five reduction requirement of 534.33 kilograms of phosphorus, um, we have received 508.62 kilograms of phosphorus removal by DEC. So you have our goal of 534.33 and what we have achieved thus far. Our year six through 10 reduction, our goal is 524.72 kilograms of phosphorus. And thus far for year six through 10, we've achieved 16.10 kilograms of phosphorus removal. So the numbers aren't equating or haven't equated yet. Some projects are in different stages, whether they be design, um, construction, um, whether or not they're functioning. So all of these projects are in different stages throughout the East of Hudson watershed area. So um, by the end of the permit year, year 10, we will have met hopefully all of our um, phosphorus reduction requirement. Uh, the town of Newcastle in years both one through 10, we have five projects that have been identified. We have a project in Burden Preserve. We have a pro we have two projects in Burden Preserve rather. Um, we have a project along Shether Road. We have a project at Chapel Court Crossing and we have a project at Courtmel Road. And each one of those projects are not, have they have not yet been implemented. They are in various stages of design and the the town board will receive information as we move along with those projects. When it comes to minimum control measure six, this is good housekeeping. How, how do we take care of all of our town facilities? Um, we have different operations, activities, facility, and facilities where we conduct what's called a self-assessment. And this relates to street maintenance, bridge maintenance, winter road maintenance, salt storage, our solid waste management, municipal construction and land disturbances, our habitat modification, how we maintain our right-of-ways, how do we maintain our parks and open spaces, 
the practices that occur at our municipal buildings, our general stormwater maintenance, system maintenance, our fleet and vehicle maintenance, and so much more. All of our municipal activities have an impact under good housekeeping on stormwater. When it comes to the strategies that we've implemented during the reporting year, we have swept 52 acres of parking lots. Now, this isn't to say that we have 52 acres of parking lots. It is a calculation that DEC wants us to perform, whereby we take our total acres of parking lots and we multiply them by the number of times we have swept them. We have swept 158 miles of streets. We have inspected and cleaned 120 catch basins. We have inspected and cleaned our post-construction control practices. We've applied 2,400 pounds of nitrogen in our fertilizers at our parks. And we've trained 100% of our municipal employees who need training. Um, our fertilizer in our parks is is applied based on testing and uh, routine program requirements. So this is kind of a rundown of the strategies we've implemented for the reporting year. We have instituted, how do we evaluate this or measure this? So we have instituted reporting procedures for each of the departments in the municipal government. We um, ask those procedures within each of their departments to be reviewed to ensure that town facilities um, and maintenance activities uh, are accounted for. We work to continually improve our record keeping and our reporting procedures. I had mentioned earlier about uh, using the geographic information systems collector application on a tablet to help us track our improvements that we're making to our physical stormwater system. This also um, helps us obtain credit under good housekeeping because it helps with our record keeping. And we are also continually verifying our infrastructure. As I said before, you know, we initially thought there were over 500 outfalls. In actuality, this past year, we learned there were only 313. When it comes to um, the stormwater regulations, because we are a municipality within the New York City watershed area, we have additional watershed st strategies under our MS4 permit that we must implement. We have to educate our community, our businesses, our employees about phosphorus and nitrogen. Our programs are in place. We have mapped 100% of our stormwater conveyance system, and we have mapped additional features in relation to that stormwater conveyance system. We inspect our system, and we have a maintenance program in place, and we are continually trying to improve our tracking and our um, the breadth of that program. We also um, work with Westchester County and the other municipalities within the New York City watershed to track on-site wastewater treatment systems that have been inspected by Westchester County licensed contractors and have been maintained. We are continually trying to work with Westchester County to refine that data. We have a post-construction program um, program that is in place. And as I said earlier, we are in the second year of our five-year permit under the, the East of Hudson umbrella compliance. We're continually looking for projects within our community to obtain our phosphorus reduction credit. So with that, I'm going to bring the presentation to a close. I'm going to ask if there's any questions for either Bob or myself. Um, I'm going to make people aware that you can find information on our website, www.mynewcastle.com, or you can Google Newcastle Stormwater, and you'll, you will be um, led to a host of information on our website. Or you can also call our department, and we'll be happy to answer any questions you have regarding stormwater control. So Sabrina, if a resident were watching this presentation and had questions about um, stormwater runoff sort of adjacent to or on their property, what would be their next step? Call our office or send an email to building at mynewcastle.org. So your office is the appropriate office to contact for issues dealing with stormwater issues. 
Absolutely. We, my office is the coordinator for all stormwater information. Um, my office will either lead you to the engineering department run by Bob Scioli, or they will send you over to the Department of Public Works where they can actually address your concerns. Great. Thank you. I have no further questions. It was very comprehensive. Oh, I do want to make a correction. My Newcastle is not a dot org, or sorry, is a dot org. It is not a dot com. My apologies for that. That's an easy fix. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's all right, Sabrina. You're new here. It's okay. It's a rookie mistake. <laughs> <laughs> See, I wish to bring us into the dot com world. <laughs> See, if, if you didn't mention that, I wouldn't have noticed. <laughs> yeah, but those people that are actually emailing in, they would have noticed that. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> okay. But if you Google my new, if you Google Newcastle, you'll get the doc or dot org. You know, if that's the only mistake we made, that's pretty good. <laughs> yeah, not bad. I caught several others, but I'll speak to you about it later. <laughs> <sighs> okay. Well, thank you guys. I appreciate you listening. Um, this presentation will be posted on our website. Um, and I'm sure that there will be a repeat presentation on cable vision. And next year. <laughs> and next year, every year. <laughs> okay. Thank Thanks. you very much and good night all. So appreciate Thanks, it. All right. Good all night. Right. Good night. Bye. Thanks. Bye. Um, Rob Deary, since you're um, here, do you want to talk the board through the uh, the closure of the capital project and the authorization to establish the capital project in uh, budget for DPW regarding the wood chipper and just talk us through that. Sure. So what's happening here is in, in each time that we get a capital project that has any funds remaining that we've borrowed, uh, the roadside mower we borrowed for in 2018, we had 30, approximately $30,000 left over. Um, it has to be spent on a like item or put back into uh, to pay back the debt service. So um, we are transferring it to the new capital project and then uh, we're doing a budget transfer from I think SALT to fund the rest of that uh, purchase. Um, so each time we close out a capital project, you'll see that um, we ask the board's authorization to close it out and whatever the funds are remaining we will either allocate them to a different project, most likely we'll allocate them to a different project rather than just put them back into um, fund balance reserve for debt. Um, okay, so those two are taking over. The next is a cash bond agreement for Cynthia Court, um, which is just for, um, oh gosh, uh, pursuant to the, um, Planning board and their, let's see, 9, $9,187.50 um, in order to secure performance of certain work on Cynthia Court. And it's part of the Brandywine subdivision. So we get these on a regular basis. Um, they have to be accepted by the town board. It's part and parcel of the uh, subdivision process that comes through the planning board and zoning boards. Next is just adoption of minutes. We've got um, a payment of claims, and there's a couple of additional um, items that we have just spoken about um, that um, that we should uh, talk about in, exec in, uh, in work session. One is we've received the resignation of Mary Deems, um, our longtime deputy uh, town clerk. Mary is a longtime uh, resident. Um, actually, she grew up here um, and has worked for the town for quite a long time, uh, 20 years. And we're sad to see her go, but we're so thrilled for her that she's going to have the time to, um, you know, do the things that she wants with the people that she loves. And and we're very excited for her. So we're going to I'm going to ask the board to accept her uh, retirement tonight, and then I'm going to ask for authorization to post the position so uh, we could get somebody in here to help uh, Christina Papes with all of the work that she needs to do. Um, the other thing I'm going to be asking the board about is to uh, approve a resolution this evening that would um, allow us to um, extend the senior exemptions from, for refuse for those individuals who were unable um, either to get to the post office or to get to a copier to allow uh, Josh Herman, our assessor, to carry over that uh, refuse uh, exemption from last year to this year. 
um, because of COVID-19 and the unique circumstances that are raised by it. And Jill, will um, seniors need to contact Josh to let them know, let him know that they're taking advantage of that or will this be automatic? No, this, this will be an automatic. We, um, we fear that at this late date, um, you know, that assessment, that June 1st date is, is looming on us, that uh, Josh has been trying to reach out to people, but for any number of reasons, people just aren't able to, you know, get to the places they need to get to in order to get Josh the information. And we don't want them to be in a position where uh, through no fault of their own and certainly through circumstances outside their control, they lose an exemption that's, that's important to them, so. That makes sense. And how long is the extension for? Um, it's gonna be through for this year. For so it's going to be uh, included in the, uh, the assessment role that has to be, um, uh, that's the June one day. So every, all those exemptions have to be filed and incorporated into that. So we're sort of bumping up on the deadline. Got it. Thank you. There are only a handful left, so uh, we just don't want those people to lose it. Um, and the other thing that the board has been asking about is drive-in movies. So uh, Ike um, has gone out and has received, uh, has obtained uh, three separate uh, rental proposals for uh, a, a drive-in size movie screen rental. Um, and we're going to recommend to the board that they approve the rental from Frost, um, just for forty-seven hundred dollars and change each time, with the hope that if we do multiple um, events, that we probably can get that price down significantly or somewhat anyway. Um, and those are the Bill. Yes. Can I ask a question about the drive-in movies? Sure. Um, do you know how uh, it would work audio wise? Yes, so evidently there's a, um, they, they set up the, um, the trans transmitters, I guess, but it, it, uh, it ties into the FM radio in your car. And that's, oh, that's great. And we know how yeah. to do that. <laughs> You're not old enough, but they, they used to be like these clunky things that hung on the, yeah, the yeah, yeah. Window. yeah, that you couldn't hear no matter what. Yeah. It, Forgetting that to you. Um, but yeah, when it was a thing. But yeah, evidently the sound's actually pretty good. So we'll see how it goes. We're very excited about it. Um, once we're able to uh, secure the, the contract with them, we'll be able to uh, propose some dates for the board. At this point, we're talking about maybe one in June, one in July, and one in August, because unfortunately, um, we've been required to cancel the first two of the summer concerts and we're so disappointed about that. So we're hoping to substitute in something fun uh, for residents to be able to come out. And uh, so stay tuned for dates and times and all that other good stuff. Okay. Um, Christina, the resolutions were um, circulated around. I saw them. Yeah. Have we got them all? Yeah. Okay. Are you ready for them? I think we're ready for them. And I don't, I don't see, a re do we need a resolution for, for uh, approving the uh, movie night, the equipment rental or is um, Yes. Yeah. I don't think it's in there. Okay, one second. Let me go, uh, let me just find the. All right, so while you're doing it, I'll, st I'll start. Or okay. I'll st All right, I move uh, to approve the payment of claims in the amount of 548,400 Eight dollars forty-one cents listed on the summary pre-check writing report and deal detailed voucher detail report. Each prepared on May nineteenth, twenty twenty. Checks will be issued and mailed to each claimant listed on Wednesday, May twentieth, twenty twenty. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, I move to adopt the following set of town board minutes: May fifth, twenty twenty work session. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, I move to authorize the controller's office to make adjusted entries to all accounts associated with the closing of the 2018 tractor roadside mower purchase capital project based on verification from the Newcastle Department of Public Works that the project is complete. Uh, and as of December 31st, 2019, there was a balance of $34,070.35 in that account. And those monies are being earmarked for uh, this uh, purchase of a new wood chipper. Um, Whereas Tom Controller Robert Deary concurs with the request and recommends corrective action be taken so that the project can be closed out and the remaining balance be transferred as stated and the capital fund to be modified as follows. Uh, reduce budget by $34,070.35 to expense account as listed uh, from $125,000 to $90,929.65. 
reduce the budget of $34,070.35 to the revenue count as listed uh, from $125,000 to that same aforementioned number. Uh, journal entry to transfer $34,070.35 from serial bond proceeds revenue account as listed to newly established serial bond proceed revenue account uh, in the 2020 DPW Wood Chipper Purchase Capital Project. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, I move to establish a capital project with the said number with total project budget of $58,707.64 for the purchase of one 2020 model year bandit intimidator 18 XP wood chipper for the Newcastle Department of Public Works. This project will be funded with $34,070.35 in serial bond proceeds transferred from the 20, 2018 tractor roadside mower purchase capital project uh, and twenty-four thousand six hundred thirty-seven dollars and twenty-nine cents transferred from the highway fund. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, I move to authorize the acceptance of longtime uh, deputy town clerk Mary C. Deems, effective May 29th, twenty ninth, twenty twenty. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. And thank you for your service, Mary. End of an era. <laughs> uh, I move to, uh, to authorize the posting of the position of deputy town clerk. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Take us home. All right. <laughs> uh, I move to adopt the following resolution, whereas pursuant to section 72-8 uh, of the town code, certain senior citizens are eligible to qualify for a partial exemption from the payment of unit charges for garbage and refuse collection charges. And whereas such exemption is determined upon the submission of required documentation to the satisfaction of the town assessor, which is submitted and reviewed on an annual basis. And whereas the governor has issued a stay at home order with special provisions for senior citizens in New York state uh, and the federal government have extended the time frame by which federal tax returns must be submitted and such tax return would be submitted along with the application for a partial senior citizen exemption. Now, therefore, in light of the COVID-19 emergency and associated executive orders on, and health risk, the town board hereby authorizes the town assessor to determine eligibility of senior citizen partial exemptions from the payment unit of charges for garbage and refuse collection charges for the 2020 assessment role based on upon the 2019 income tax returns currently filed in the assessor's office and the town assessor is hereby authorized to take any steps necessary to implement this resolution. Any Second. steps? Any steps? Any. Any at all. Woo! Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Um, that one for us, Joe? Yeah, the, the last one is for um, to um, approve the proposal from Frost Productions for a 40 by 22 foot screen, rental of a 40 by 22 foot screen for the price of $4,738. Um, Rob, do I have to note how many times we can rent it or ideally we'd like to rent it up to three times or? Yeah, so I think you would wanna say, um for up to three times at a maximum cost of, are we saying 4,000 each or are we saying 47? What? 47, I don't have the, the exact amount if um, if we're doing it multiple. I thought it was it was about $4,000, but I, I, I'd rather go up a little bit so, on it. Sure right, so do it not to exceed 47. What about 15,000? Yeah, it's, let's make it easy. 15, okay, not to exceed for a total of, uh, you know, three showings not to exceed $15,000 total. Okay, great, thank you. Move, uh, so moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Drive in movies, yay. Okay. Um, okay, I think that's all I have. Um, um, one thing, uh, Christina's having technical issues, but she wanted to know if you wanted to do the cash bond? Or oh, like I'm sorry. Yeah, um, Cynthia Cord, it's actually in the packet. Hi, sorry about that. I'm having a little technical difficulty here with my audio. But um, 
The rest of the yeah, I didn't know. I wasn't sure whether we wanted to vote on that tonight, but okay. it is in your packet. If you can just flip to that. Yeah, page 54. Yeah, I clicked out. It's not on my. So someone want to run it? Read it? Go, Jason. Yeah. Sure. I move to adopt the following resolution authorizing the acceptance of cash bonds. Whereas Gorin John uh, Kinnick LLC, owner, the owner of the property located at 8 Cynthia Court, Mount Kisco, New York, 10549, and shown on the town of Newcastle tax map as section uh, 81.10, block one, lot 1.6 has applied for and obtained the necessary approvals for the property from the Town of Newcastle Planning Board as set, forth, as set forth in the Planning Board Resolution dated November 14th, 2017. And whereas pursuant to the requirements of the resolution, the owner wishes to post a sum of money with the Town of Newcastle to ensure that all mitigating mitigation plantings are guaranteed and replaced as necessary to comply with the final landscaping plan. And whereas the owner submitted a cash bond agreement in the amount of $9,187.50, which cash bond agreement secures and covers the work. <coughs> and whereas the town attorney and the town engineer have, re have reviewed the cash bond agreement and find it acceptable form and amount respectively. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the town board of the town of Newcastle hereby authorizes the, the acceptance of the aforementioned cash bond agreement. Be it further resolved that the town board of the town of Newcastle hereby authorizes the supervisor or his duly or her duly authorized designee to sign the cash bond agreement along with all other documents necessary to effectuate the purpose of this resolution. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 How come she can't do it by all means necessary, but Rob can do stuff by all means necessary? Mr. Deary, your question? Uh, uh, good question. No privilege, I guess. <laughs> Go like, That's the answer, but never mind. I'm not asking. Uh, can we move to adjourn? Is that, are we good? Yeah, we don't have, um, just housekeeping note, we don't have a meeting next week. Right. Um, we'll meet again on June 2nd. And we look forward to all the details on the Memorial Day Parade. Oh, absolutely. Thank you, everyone. All right. Thank you. Okay. Good second. night. Anyone second? Anyone second? Oh, second. We need a motion. Oh, favor. <laughs> 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 Bye. Bye. <laughs>